Hey guys, it's Garth and I'm going to walk you through setting up Google Forms. So uh, Google Forms is a way to collect information uh, from kids, have it organized for you in Google Sheets. So I'm going to kind of show you this process. Um, I'm going to have you build a assessment or some kind of knowledge thing with at least different five types or five different types of questions. You're going to include an image, a reading or a video. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to post that down here so other people can go look at that and um, we'll be able to take your quiz and we'll get lots of people taking each other's quizzes so you can see how scores work. So first we've got to go to our drive. Um, we can do that through our drive bookmark we did or through the waffle. Um, and I need to build a new, this time I'm not doing a doc or a slide, but I'm going to do more and I want to use Google Form. They're the purple icon. Google Forms always looks the same. They're pretty basic, so I'm going to call this uh, Google Test. Oops. Uh, Google um, Test uh, Quiz. If I make typos like that, I'm not changing them. So we'll deal. The first thing you always want to do is it's going to build the first question. It's multiple choice, but you'll see something happen here. The first thing you always want to ask is name. As soon as I return, it automatically adjusted to a short answer. It recognizes you want just that answer. This allows you to copy or duplicate your questions to delete them, or over here you can require them. Like name, you should require. It's forced, they're forced to do it. Here you have description or response uh, validation. Right now, description would just let you add a little description. Um, you can do that sometimes, you don't need it here. So I'm going to add a new question. The second question I always do is the period. Let's do that through drop down. Okay, so we'll do that through a drop, drop down. So now I've used the second type. My first drop down will be period one, right? Period three, period five, period six, period, uh, period eight. Now the purpose for doing this is, um, or for putting these in, is because now when the scores come to me, I can organize these scores by class period. So if I don't get to look at the scores until the end of the day, you know, and some kids maybe took a special ed teacher earlier, I can organize it. So we're going to add that, make that required. So now my first question is going to be multiple choice. Um, the flag is red, or is what color? Okay, so basic question. I could say red, yellow, and I guess I should have stipulated American flag, but you get it. Um, green all right good enough i could add as many questions as i want notice i can add images over here but we're going to leave it alone for now um that's required i'll show you how to tell the correct answer in a minute next i'm going to add another question and this one i'm going to say what colors are in our flag the american flag okay so i'll be a little more specific and now there's multiple answers. So multiple choice doesn't work. Now I want to use checkbox. Checkboxes allow them to pick multiple options. So I can say red. Nope, so that were red. That's exactly what I said. I was not going to go back and change, but uh, I'm going to because I should be able to spell red. White, blue, green. Um, and we're going to make this required. Again, you don't have to make all these required, but then kids could submit the quiz without answering them. It's not a quiz yet. Right now, we're just making a little thing. I'll show you the quiz in a minute. So now we've asked checkbox. Um, this one's a multiple choice. This is a drop down, and this is short answer. So my directions say use five. We've already used four. So I'm going to add another one. And this one, I'm going to add a picture. So I can click a picture. This can be any picture you take. You can take it from your camera. You can upload it from Drive. Um, I'm just going to grab a picture on my desktop. So I've got this beautiful picture of, of this strange person. And it's going to appear on my little quiz question. Maybe. And I'm going to write, who is this? Now, I want this to probably be multiple choice again. So I'm going to put it's Bob. Or it's Garth. Required question. Now, this could be a chart. This could be a graph. It could be a reading, like I'm going to do in a second. I'm trying to teach the kids about this, the caucus. And maybe I'm not sure they read it 
so I want to make them read this part over again. So I'm going to screenshot it. Now on mine, I do Command Shift four because I'm using a Mac. If you're using your PC, you're going to have to use what's called uh, the snippet tool. Macs automatically save all your screenshots to your desktop, which you can see. A PC, you have to tell it where to save. I recommend your desktop because then you can find it easily and delete it later. So I go back to my quiz and I'm adding another question. This time I'm going to add a reading, but that reading is a screenshot. So I'm not putting the whole reading in. I just took a screenshot and it will embed that reading. So now I can add readings to my quiz. So here comes our reading. And there it is. They can read that. And so my question might be, um, I didn't really read this, so I'm going to pretend. Um, how, how does a caucus work? Now, I assume the answer is in there. This will be a written response. So I go to paragraph. Now, I'm going to talk about this. I don't like these kind in quizzes like we're making because you have to go read this. It cannot self-grade a short response. So keep that in mind. Um, but I've added another type of question with an image in, a picture in, multiple choice. I'll do one more question. Um, and let's say it's linear. I'm going to do a linear. Uh, so I'm on a linear scale. I'm going to have 5B agree and 6B disagree. Now, that assumes you pick it. So how do you feel? All right. So a real question would be like, I love the idea of a caucus, which I don't know who, I don't know how to spell caucus. C-A-U-C-U-S. C-A-C-U-C-S. Is that right? I'm, all right, I'm not a good speller. You've probably figured that out. I love the idea of a caucus, period. So they would say I agree or disagree. So I got my quiz done, right? That's all I'm going to do. Now I could add as many questions as I want. Oh, actually, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add this. Do you know what this is? It's a video. So I'm going to add a YouTube on the electoral. Oops, it's not typing. Um, see, I can't spell. And I don't feel good. That's not the electric college. Okay, presidential election. I think I can do that. I can't. I don't feel good right now, so I'm doing this because I'm afraid I'm getting pretty sick. And I'm worried about that for tomorrow. So we'll see what it finds. Um, U.S. presidential elections, you know, whatever. Um, how elections work. It's four minutes. I put it in. Now I can literally say, after you watch this, dot, 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 whatever I was going to tell them. All right. Um, oh wait. After you watch this, answer the question below. Now, why am I doing this? Because there's no place to do a question. The video goes in on its own, so you drag the question beneath. Uh, how does you know, the system work? All right. Now, because I put a question mark there, again, I'm looking for a longer response, so I change it to that. That's my quiz. Now, up here we have some options. This is your theme. So you can choose a header. I'm just going to choose one they give you. You can upload, whoops, I'm sorry. You can upload your own or you can upload photos. I'm going to use a microphone. I don't know why, just because it's there. That builds it on top of the quiz. You'll see it up here. I, I can change the colors um, and themes, basic stuff, font style, you can mess around with. This is a preview of what it looks like when the kids go to take it. So this is what they would literally see. This is the way it looks now online, and they can submit their answers. Um, this is your settings. This is important. So in here, you can have them collect emails. So it'll collect each kid's email in case they don't want to give you an email. You can also send them a response receipt that tells them that they always, you know, you always got it. 
You can limit it to one user. So if it's a quiz, you can say they can only take it one time, right? And you can let them know, do you want them, never, never pick this one, okay? You can, um, and I typically never let them do that either. I don't usually do these two. Um, this lets them see all the, the, the like charts and stuff. So it kind of, if, if it's a quiz, you don't want kids to necessarily see that. I typically don't do these as well, but they're there. Under presentation, you can shuffle or show a progress bar. You don't need it on this. You can shuffle the question order. Now, on this particular one, I do not want to do that. Because if I do that, it's going to move this video somewhere, and then it's going to say, answer the question below, and it might not be below. So I'm not going to shuffle. If I have all multiple choice or all things where there's no video or any separate things like this, I could shuffle the questions so everybody's laptops looks different. They don't all have the same question at the same time. The other one is quizzes. This is where it gets interesting, right? So you can make this a quiz. It's not a quiz by nature. You have to turn quizzes on. You can allow the kids to get immediate feedback or you can turn it on later. That will collect their emails and then you can actually push the scores out. I almost always leave it on, but I don't show correct answers to them. I show them the questions they missed and the point value, but I do not show them the correct answer so it's not if they're looking at it. When you do that, everything changes now, right? Your questions, when you get to them, if you click, you can now make an answer key. All right, so we go to the answer key. I can have this be one point or as many points as I want. This is a 10 point question. What color is, or the flag is what color? The best answer is that. I'm done. You have to make the quiz. What colors are in the American flag? I'm gonna make this a three point question because there's three right answers. If they only click red, it's gonna mark it wrong, okay? If they only click red and white, it's gonna mark it wrong. They have to click all three. You can add feedback, right? So again, we can attach a picture. We can put, it's red, white, you know, white and blue. I don't typically add this, but you can. That way it kicks back and tells them something. Always hit done. I forgot about that. Next one, again, I'm gonna give it an answer key. Make this one point and the correct answer is Garth. No need for feedback. On this one, it's longer answer. So on the answer key, this gets really tricky. If you write the answer, um, or if you go into the answer key and you make it worth a point, I typically just don't put points on these and then add them to the score at the end because you have to tell what you want it to say. That's pretty hard. So I would just leave the point value on this particular one at zero and say done. That doesn't mean you can still grade it, but we're not gonna grade it electronically. This one, I'm gonna be just super sweet and whatever they answer, right? I'm just gonna give them a point as long as they answer it. And in this one, I'm gonna leave um, pointless again. I'm just gonna leave it zero. There's no right answer key. At this point, my quiz is made. It's worth a total of 15 points, right? So um, I can now send it. I can email it. I can put a link in. There's the link I would use, right? Notice I can do the shortener if you're trying to send it somewhere. So I can copy that. Or I can embed it. So I can grab embed code, um, the embed code. And ultimately, I'm going to show you this even though we haven't done sites yet. I could go on and grab embed. Oops, click embed, put the code in, oops, click to embed, put the code in, and it'll actually build my form right into my web page where they would take it on my web page. So if I say insert, that's going to appear in our website. And they can literally do it right inside the website. Now, that's not how I'm going to send it, so I'm going to delete that for now. In mine, I'm going to do it as a link. All right, so I can go to here and I can say, now you'll see this, here is my example, okay? And I can link this like we learned yesterday, make it a link and paste that link in. So that way you can go see the tutorial I'm making. So the other thing I can do 
is I can just take that link and put it on and pretend like I'm somebody new. So now I'm, I'm going to practice my own quiz. Here's my quiz. All right, my name is, um, enter my email. So my email is my son, right? It put the name in. I'm in a period. There's the drop down. I'm in period three. What color is our flag? I pick red, right? What colors are in the American flag? Let's say I'm only going to, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to say this is Garth. I'm going to, um, oh, that put his phone number in there, which you shouldn't have seen. But anyways, I write, um, here is how it works, blah, 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 blah. I totally disagree, right? I can watch the video right inside of here, right? And I can write my answer. It works, da, da, da. Okay, and now I submit. I told it to give me a score, so watch what it does. It says, hey, view your score. So when I click, it's gonna show me my score. I got 11 out of 15. It tells me I got that right, but I got this wrong. It does not tell me why it's right, except the feedback did. It shows me my answer. Um, I guess I didn't give myself a point for picking any of these. I didn't say what the right answer was, so I lost that. Okay, there's a quiz. You took it. If we go back to our drive now, though, right, and I reload my drive, I should have a recent document, this quiz we just made. And here it is. So I'm going to open it back up from my drive, and it's going to look a little different now. Actually, I didn't have to do that because I had it right here. And so at this point, I already got a response. It tells me somebody responded. So I can click responses, and it shows me, okay, there's my point distribution. The average is 11 right now, right? This was the most missed question. It shows me what periods. It shows me the percentage, so I know what I'm doing. Okay, I know that, right? Um, and it shows me all these things they wrote. That's an easy way to do it, but you can immediately click this, and it will automatically create an Excel Google Sheet. Every time somebody answers, it's going to kick it into this Google Sheet. And what's nice is it tells me when they took it, the person's email, their score, their name, what period they're in. If I'm going to read and add points for the answers they gave, I can go over and read this and say, okay, this kid really gets a 12, and I could add a point or whatever I want. But that's kind of how it works. When you get lots of kids, you can sort by columns, right? So you can sort by period. Under here, you can click sort the sheet by periods so it'll bring all the threes together all the eights together that's why you want those periods so that's how you build it again if you choose not to make it a quiz i can go back in settings and i can turn the quiz part off and just make an assignment that they do so i can see if they get the right answers or not but that's how you make a google quiz right that's how in this case um, i put the link on my google so there's my example. When we get to classroom, you'll be able to basically push it out directly in classroom and they can take it. So those are Google Forms. Um, you will see down here there's other things you can do. We did the email and we set some restrictions. We can share it so we can build quizzes with other people. Um, you can go uh, to new pages and quizzes based on your answer. So you can make like a, if they answer this, take them here. If they answer this, you can take them here. You can provide the feedback. We can change the background. And we can use this repeatedly for like um, exit slips. So I have some called just exit slip and it says, what did you learn today? And they can write whatever answer they want. I don't have to keep remaking the form. When you are completely done, you're gonna type your name in this form. You're gonna tell me it's a Google form and you're gonna put the live link. So that's the quiz link, right? That's the quiz link that you get right here. You're just going to take that link and paste it into here and submit. Right underneath, um, this form, oh yeah, to see what's been posted, you can click right here. And that will show, and so you can click on other people's quizzes when you finish and start taking them. That way they get lots of feedback, and then we can look at the Excel as a group how to, how to do some things with it. So that's Google Forms. Hope that is helpful.